In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you some basic expressions that are incredibly helpful. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel. In part 2, we talked about the random expression. If you want your random animations to look the same, each time you render them, you need to set a seed value. With the seed random expression, each seed number has an assigned animation pattern. To do that, we add the seed random expression before the random expression. In parentheses, a number, let's say 1, which looks like this. You could also refer the seed value to the index number of a layer. For layer 1, it is 1 as well. And it has the exact same animation pattern than before. There's an optional second part of the expression, comma, timeless equals false, which means the position changes each frame. If you set this value to true, it sets a random position, then freezes. If you duplicate the shape, the seed number refers to the index number of the layers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Each shape will have a different random position. Next, I've created an animation using a trim pass animator. The round shape moves along the path, once, I animated the offset property from 0 to 360 degrees, which is one revolution. Let's loop this animation using the loop expression. Therefore, we add an expression to the offset property and add the loop in expression, which is one of the two versions of the expression. We select it in the drop down menu. Then let's move the keyframes further to the right. It loops your animation before the first keyframe then stops after the last one. Let's move the keyframes back to the beginning and add the second version, the loop out expression. The loop out expression loops your animation beyond the last keyframe. This is the version you'll probably use most. Because your keyframes are probably at the beginning. There are different types of loops, like cycle. Add them inside the parentheses and in quotation marks, which changes nothing because the expression is set to cycle by default. It repeats the animation over and over. Ping pong, like the name suggests, plays the keyframes back and forth. The next type is continue. Let's add it to the expression. We need to change the animation for that and move this endpoint up here a little bit. Because what this type does, it keeps the speed and movement of the last frame and continues it. Let's activate the post expression graph and you can see this linear speed line here. The fourth type is offset. Let's move the point back down and change the second keyframe value to 200 degrees instead. Then let's replace continue with offset. Offset takes the last value as new start value and continues the animation from there. Expressions are incredibly helpful, like this particles rig. Once set up, you can use it again and again. Impossible with keyframes. Or create a transition rig, for example. Use expression controls to quickly adjust it. Then use it as template in Premiere Pro. I know this is overwhelming at the beginning. That's why in my new course we start from zero. In 30 lessons we go through the basics. Basic expressions, responsive animations, dynamic text animations, and repetitive techniques. Plus, I add new bonus content every month. You will create animations that wouldn't be possible without expressions. Join now and learn how to animate with expressions in After Effects. The source rector time expression returns the width and height dimensions of text and shape layers. I've already created a text layer. Let's add a shape layer by double clicking on the rectangle tool. We use a fill, no stroke. And let's move it below in the layer stacking order. And in the rectangle path property, we add an expression to the size property of the shape. Then we define a variable. S like size equals, we link to the text layer. We want its dimensions. Dot source rect at time, semicolon. Then we define a variable for each dimension, w equals s dot width, semicolon, h equals s dot height, semicolon. And finally, we add an array, square brackets, w comma h inside. 
Awesome! The shape has the exact same dimensions as the text layer. Let's add some padding though. Plus 30 to the width and plus 30 to the height. When we add or delete some letters, the size adjusts. But we still need to pin the anchor points of both layers. Let's pin it to the center of the left edge. We open the anchor point property of the text layer. Add an expression. A like anchor point equals source rector time, semicolon. X equals a dot left, semicolon. It moves the point to the left edge. Y equals a dot top plus a dot height divided by two, semicolon. It moves the point down half the height of the shape. Then an array. Square brackets, x, y inside. And the anchor point is pinned to the center of the left edge of the layer. We copy the expression, open the anchor point property of the shape layer, and add an expression and paste it. Awesome. Then we need to make sure the position values are the same. Let's link them. Now we need to add half the padding to the x value of the shape layer though, to center the text. Let's add it to the x value, plus 15. Finally, you could add a scale animator to the text layer. Set scale to zero and animate the start value, and you have a basic dynamic text animation. If you want to learn more about expressions and in-depth explanations, check out my course. On the left side, I've added a video you might like. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye everyone.